In this tutorial video we'll be looking at perpetuities. Now the term perpetuities is associated or derived from the term perpetual meaning never ending. So let's have a look. In a perpetuity a person invests money into an account and the bank will in kind return with interest. And that's periodically. It could be monthly, quarterly or annually. So your principal increases in size. Then, um, periodically, there's a perpetuity or a payment made back to yourself as the investor. So you get a return from your investment. Now at the end of every year, let's consider, we have interest given by the bank compounded into your principal and we also have the amount of perpetuity being paid back to the investor and they're equal. Okay, You get as much out as the bank puts in. So the value of the principal doesn't change. Annuities on the other hand normally go up and down depending if you're investing or paying off a reducing balance loan. But in this case with a perpetuity the main focus is that the principal remains unchanged. And this process is repeated year after year. So you may earn $100 interest and that's paid as a perpetuity at the end of the year and the balance or the principal remains the same. Let's consider an example. Football Federation Australia has $200,000 invested as a perpetuity for grassroots soccer clubs. FFA for short invests in bonds that return 5% per annum compounding annually. First of all we're going to find the amount of the annual grant and what interest rate compounded annually would be required if the perpetuity is to provide $12,000 each year. Further, FFA wants to investigate alternative arrangements for the structure of the grant. How much extra would the annual grant amount to if the original interest rate was compounded monthly? And also what interest rate compounded monthly would be required to provide for equal quarterly payments of $5,000 every three months? So our first example says or requests us to find the amount of the annual grant. So we had a principal of $200,000. We have an annual interest rate of 5% per annum and our payments are annually. Now because the rates per annum and the payments are per annum are the same, we can put them straight into the equation for perpetuity formula. And this predicts we'd get an annual payment of $10,000 using the perpetuity formula. We can also use the TI Inspire CAS calculator, Menu, Finance, Finance Solver. Now with perpetuities and the Finance Solver, the first thing to note is that N is 1, one annual payment. That's all we need because it repeats year after year after year. The interest rate we started with was 5%. The present or principal value in this case was $200,000. It goes in as a negative because it's an investment going into the financial institute or the bank. Payment we're interested in to calculate so we'll make that blank for now. The future value does not change it is a perpetuity so at the end we have 200000 as well. In the future rather. We are paying once per year and compounding once per year. So the payment when I press enter was as we predicted using the formula $10,000. And here's the summary. So the value of the annual grant for FFA would be $10,000. What interest rate compounded annually would be required if the perpetuity is to provide not $10,000 but $12,000 each year? So the principal again is $200,000. The payment now is $12,000 per annum and we want to calculate the rate of interest annually. Again because Q&R are both annually, once a year, we can substitute them into the formula to predict we will require an interest rate of 6% per annum. We can again use the TI Inspire. Again we use an N of 1. We're looking to calculate a rate so we'll delete that, clear that. We have minus 200,000 put in first of all for our present value. Our payments now were 10,000. We're looking to ramp them up to $12,000. If we uh, remain our future value at 200000 our payment per year is 1 and our compounding period is 1 because it's annually. And that again, as predicted, comes out with an interest rate of 6%. And here's our summary. 
so the required interest rate would be 6% per annum in order to return $12,000 each year from this particular perpetuity. How much extra would the annual grant amount to if the original interest rate was compounded monthly? Now because we are looking at compounding monthly but paying yearly, we cannot use the perpetuity formula. We must use our finance solver. So in this particular example, n remains as 1. We're going back to an interest rate of 5 as originally stated. 200,000 has been invested. The payments, that's what we're trying to calculate. So we'll clear that future value of 200,000. And we're looking at one payment per year. But in this example, we are looking at monthly compounding periods. The interest rate compounds monthly. So this is one of those rare occurrences where the payments per year is 1 and a different value, the compounding periods per year is 12. This would give us a payment of $10,232 and roughly 38 cents. Here's our summary. So the compounded amount is $10,232 and 38 cents. So comparing that to our 10,000 response or return per year, compounding monthly would increase our return by, or payment rather, by $232.38. Finally, what interest rate compounded monthly would be required to provide four equal, that is quarterly payments of $5,000? Quarterly means every three months. So again, we've got number one as our number of terms. We're only interested in it for one. Our interest rate, we will clear because we're trying to solve that. $200,000 has been invested. Payments this time, we wanted to increase our payments to $5,000. Future value is still 200000 The payments per year were four because they were quarterly payments of five hundred of, of rather $5,000. Um, whereas our compounding period per year will be 12 because it's monthly compounded. Interest is monthly compounded. So the rate we get will be 9.92% annually compounded monthly. Again, because our frequency of payment and our compounding period are different, we have to use the finance solver. And again, there's our summary of 9.92% compounded monthly to give us quarterly payments of $5,000. Now, final example, if Cricket Australia also wishes to provide $20,000 of grants each month to grassroots cricket clubs, they find a financial institute that will provide a long-term interest rate of 12% per annum. They want to work out how much they need to invest, what principal is needed. Now, because here we're looking to calculate the principal as the unknown, we cannot use the financial solver. If we went to the financial solver, it would ask for a PV and an FV both to be blank, and that just isn't allowed. So we go back to our perpetuity formula. The principal is what we're trying to solve. The rate is now 12% per annum. But because we're looking at um, grants being allocated monthly, we have to alter that back to 1% per month. Being 12% per annum divided by 12 months gives me 1% per month. And the payments are $20,000 per month. We can substitute that into our equation, and we find that Cricket Australia would need to invest $2 million in order to provide $20,000 of grants every month when the investment is long-term at a rate of 12% per annum.